Welcome to our Gracie Jiu-Jitsu self-defense course. I'm here with Erkan Mete, and now we're gonna move into a whole new section of our course, and that is clinches. Clinch fighting, getting to the clinches, knowing what to do. For me, this is probably the least practiced aspect of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, and one that I think is vitally important. Um, it'll actually even help you on the ground, but it's crucial to understand how to fight in the clinch. Uh, if you're not training this, you should be training this. We train it almost every single class um, because jiu-jitsu is an art of control. control. There's two aspects to control, okay? Learning how not to be controlled and, of course, learning how to control your opponent. So we talked earlier in, this, in the distance management idea of there's the safe distance, the middle danger distance, and the safe distance again, okay? So when I'm here... I can't predict your, the things you're using. I can't limit the ability of your things to use. Once I clinch you, I may not limit them all, but I've limited a lot of them. I can smother his attacks. If you're trying to hit me from here, do you have much power? No. Okay. Um, I can, of course, attack. I can set up takedowns. I can set up standing submissions. Um, but more importantly, by being connected, I can predict and direct his movements. I can't emphasize enough that how that is central to jiu-jitsu's power. Okay, so you need to practice constantly how to get to the clinch and how to maintain the clinch and also how to escape the clinch. In the last section on the standing self-defense, and much of the standing self-defense is escaping clinches because people grab you because why? They want to hurt you and they don't want you taking off, right? But of course, from a more offensive standpoint, we want to get to the clinch. Okay, so let's understand that there are three areas, if you will, that you will, you will focus on clinching. You don't have to be great at these, but you want to at least understand how to do all of them because something I tell my students all the time, every class is two classes. If I teach you how to do an arm bar, what am I also teaching you? How to not get caught in an arm bar. Right, how to, how to defend, how to escape an arm bar, right? Because all you got to do is think, do the opposite of what I'm being taught. Okay, so... What are those three areas? I can clinch his head. There's a whole art to it. You know, headlocks, tie clinches, single collar ties, all of this. I can clinch his torso, his body. You know, this is where a lot of, you know, Greco type work goes on. Um, standing self-defense works a lot from the body clinch. And then I can clinch the legs. Sort of freestyle, folk style wrestling is a lot, lot there. Single legs, double legs, high crotches, all of that. You need to master all three, and you need to be able to transition between all three, okay? And of course, you need to be able to defend all three. Okay, so from here, we're going to work into what I consider sort of the fundamental clinch works you should do. And again, I cannot emphasize enough that you practice this every single class if you can. Um, you will be far more likely to deal with clinch fighting mm -hmm. if you ever get attacked in the street or you ever have to defend yourself or you get in a fight then you will escaping omolatas, okay? So it's gonna have a, a high reward.